This is one of three major infectious diseases hospitals in Moscow, a city of nearly 13 million people. Two of its buildings were recently demolished when the COVID-19 pandemic had already started. Last year, Moscow's mayor announced that a new hospital will be built here, but it's unclear when. Some statistics show that nearly half of all hospitals have been closed nationwide. Here in this video, opposition figure Ilya Yashin estimates 60 hospitals were closed in Moscow alone. The government calls it optimization of healthcare, merging hospitals or turning them into polyclinics in an effort to be more cost-effective. But experts say in reality this often meant closing them down. These Congolese firefighters have started the process of disinfecting public places in the country's capital. Every fence, gate and street sprayed as a response to the coronavirus pandemic. A chlorinated solution is used to keep the virus at bay. While the DRC's health system has been stretched further by COVID-19, Sunday was supposed to bring some level of respite. This was the day which the country hoped to bring the curtain down on another contagion which has claimed thousands of lives over an 18-month period, the Ebola virus. But on Friday, the World Health Organization announced a new case from the town of Beni, with the patient becoming the first person to contract and subsequently die from the virus in more than 50 days. The death of a second victim treated at the same facility was reported later on Sunday. You know, coronavirus is not the only danger that's threatening some parts of this nation. On this Easter Sunday, there's flooding, hail and tornadoes, though they've been hammering Americans in the southeast and southwest. Take a look. You can see the hail falling hard. That happens to be outside San, An uh, San Angelo, Texas. A likely tornado has hit northern Louisiana in the city of Monroe. City officials there tweeting that there's been damage in multiple locations, including at one of the office buildings at the Monroe Regional Airport complex. The mayor and airport director just announced all flights out of that airport have been canceled until further notice due to weather and debris removal. And we're also hearing reports that there's been a few minor injuries from this likely tornado. Some breaking news now. The world's largest oil producers have agreed to the biggest ever cut in oil production. Demand for oil has plummeted amid the coronavirus crisis and with it the price per barrel. In response, OPEC, Russia and oil, other oil producing nations have made a deal to reduce production by around 10 million barrels a day in May and June. Adrian, you're absolutely right. They didn't need to do something, but the pressure really came from the United States, which wanted to see a cut in production, um, and a cut in production between 10 to 15 million barrels a day. Why? Because the shale industry in the United States is under th under threat. There is There could be up to about 70 odd companies that could fail because oil prices have dropped to $20 a barrel. ישראל נמצאת בראשיתו של משבר עמוק. בשעה הזו יושבות מאות אלפי משפחות. שוב כרזות של מנהיגים עם כאפיות, ושוב אתה שותק. שוב התגברות ואיומים. בידוד זה בידוד. זה הנושא השני. הנושא השלישי זה התנהגות מונעת של הציבור. לא רק שאתה מנהיג עשייה, אתה גם בא להתייעצויות, כנראה שאתה רואה בהם. I've got some breaking news to tell you about uh, from Turkey. The country's interior minister, Suleyman Soylu, has resigned 
Uh, this two days uh, after a two-day lockdown was announced for 31 cities in Turkey. Uh, Adrian, almost half an hour ago, he announced his resignation on his official Twitter account, saying that he is taking all responsibility for what happened on Friday night. Uh, as you also said, on Friday night, in the late, uh, late hours, Interior Ministry announced that there would be a 48-hour lockdown for 31 cities. Uh, so far, Turkish President Erdogan has been against uh, the idea of a lockdown, especially for Istanbul, as it's the economic capital uh, of the country. Now, Pakistan's top court has asked the government to remove Health Minister Zafar Mirza over his handling of the coronavirus outbreak. The Chief Justice of Pakistan, Gulzar Ahmed, said that Mirza's performance in the time of crisis was not satisfactory. Pakistan government has defended itself, saying that sacking Mirza at this point of time will be disastrous. Earlier, Zafar Mirza represented Pakistan in the SARC video conference called by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Imran Khan was the group's only leader who skipped the meat on the COVID-19 pandemic. Pakistan has over 5,300 cases and at least 93 coronavirus deaths. A new day and a renewed relief effort. These emergency supplies are going from Vanuatu's capital, Port Vila, to the country's north, where towns were last week decimated by a tropical cyclone. There's about 175,000 people that have been affected. That's nearly three quarters of our uh, population. Cyclone Harold carved a path of destruction through Vanuatu, Fiji, Tonga and the Solomon Islands. As communications are slowly restored, it's only now a proper picture is emerging. Homes have been flattened, crops destroyed and utilities brought down. In hard-hit areas, there's concern help isn't arriving fast enough. A doctor from Addington Hospital has died in a fire in an apartment building on Durban's North Beach. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we were talking to his uncle, Mohammed uh, Mula, uh, who was telling us uh, that apparently there were two doctors in the house when fire broke out. Um, at the moment, they're not sure whether he died uh, due to the fire, the pains, or it was because of the smoke. But we still have him here. Mr. Mo uh, Mula, we were still, you were still telling us uh, that um, you're not sure uh, what could have been the cause of the fire. You're 100% correct. What we do know is that at 7 o'clock in the morning, Dr. Imran Patel, who was also in the flat, was trying to leave and they couldn't find the key. At a time when nations across the globe are busy fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, China has been exerting military pressure on Taiwan. Just after China sent a fleet of fighter jets perilously close to Taiwan's airspace last week, China's domestically produced aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, on Sunday traversed the waters off Taiwan's eastern coast. Analysts say this is more than just the usual Sino-U.S. tensions. China is also trying to send a warning to Taiwan. After the CCP dispatched fighter jets skirting Taiwan a few days ago, the People's Liberation Army returned once again on Sunday in the form of a naval formation led by its homemade aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, which came close to infringing on Taiwanese waters.